As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. You know, I'm not supposed to be surprised or caught off guard as a therapist when I hear certain stories about how one person can denigrate and mistreat another person. I mean, I've heard virtually every variety of a story that you can possibly imagine. But just being really honest, <laughs> there are times when I just am continue to be amazed at how some individuals feel like it's their privilege their prerogative, their right to run other individuals into the ground. And they do it on a regular basis. If you've had an ongoing relationship with a strongly narcissistic person, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They have such an attitude of selfishness, it's all about me, which then leads to entitlement, which makes them feel like it's okay to control other individuals, which makes them feel like they're superior, and then they refuse to accept input from you because they don't need it. I mean, the, the narcissistic pattern is such that it sets them up for all sorts of dysfunction. And there's one else element that uh, gets caught up in all of this, and that's the element of respect. And as it relates to a narcissist, the narcissist wants to convey very clearly to you, I don't respect you. I don't care about you. You don't have any value other than your immediate utility to me getting my goals met. And when you've been exposed over and over and over to a narcissist messages of disrespect, it can whittle away at your own sense of resolve. So much of the work in therapy is, is trying to recoup from some of the messages of disregard and disrespect that have been uh, tossed in your direction. Today, I want to talk with you about the mindset that you can hold on to as you move away from that narcissist lack of respect for you. Now, I have a whole lot to say about this, and I'm just going to go through many bullet points as to how you might want to speak to a narcissist. I know you won't be able to say these words uh, necessarily out loud to that person, but in your mind, I'm hoping there are ideas and thoughts that you can hold on uh, onto that you might want to convey to that narcissist, and but you can hold on to these notions on the inside of yourself as you attempt to reclaim the respect that's rightfully yours. Let's get started. To the narcissist, you might wish to say, you want to meld me into you, but I'm going to go ahead and be my own distinct self. You see relationships as being transactional. I see relationships as connecting at the heart level with another individual. You wish to destroy. I seek to build. I seek to build my own uniqueness and I seek to extend that, that building process toward others where I want to build them up and make them or help them become a better version of who they are. I know that you, the narcissist, are driven by fear. You're afraid of so many different things, which is why you feel like you have to other people and you have to uh, lambast them to build yourself up. I'm driven by love, and, and I want to be known as a person who understands and lives into love in its fullest kind of way. Controlling others is of utmost importance to you. As for me, I'm into freedom. I'm into choices, which means that we each have the privilege to determine who we're going to be. That's where I stand. That's part of my respect for me and for other individuals. You, in your disrespect, Choose to motivate via shame. Somehow you feel that if you can make other individuals feel worse about themselves down at the character level, you win. But you know what? I'm motivated by encouragement, and if shame is your game, I'm not playing that anymore. I, I'm going to seek people who know how to encourage. I'm going to be a person of encouragement. You will criticize far and wide. 
I choose to find what's right and good and decent and focus on those kinds of elements in my relationships. You dread vulnerability on a personal level. You dread being exposed. You know what? I choose openness and I choose appropriate transparency. Obviously, uh, I can't be transparent with everyone, but where common sense allows, that's exactly how I'm going to proceed. You would will invalidate all sorts of ideas and truths that could transform you, but unfortunately, you don't receive input. I'm going to ponder ideas that make that help me and other individuals grow. That's what I'm going to be dedicated to. You're very willing to lie about your own humanity. You're a master of cover up. I'm going to embrace my humanity, all of it. Lumps, bumps, bruises, pluses, minuses, all of it. That's part of my respecting me. So many of your decisions are calculated and self-serving. I want to I make lifestyle choices that are guided by authenticity, being real. You know what I'm saying? No, I guess you don't. You are a keeper of many secrets. I choose honesty. And, uh, and my choices can be made public too. I don't mind being known. That's who I am. I know that doesn't fit with where you are. You desperately, you desperately want my deference. I'm not going into that space anymore. I'm going to consult my own common sense. Anger is your game. And in fact, you're committed to your anger. I'm going to stand firmly for my convictions and my needs but I'm going to do so with an attitude of dignity. We differ in that regard. You find it necessary to keep others as uh, in the inferior position to you. I like treating others in the same manner that I want to be treated. You know, the old golden rule. Maybe you've heard of it, but I don't think you understand the least what that really means. The art of listening is something that you simply dismiss. I find it helpful to listen, and to truly know the person that's standing right there in front of me. I'm committed to being that kind of person. When others err, you hold it against them. In fact, you actually take delight in knowing some of the mistakes that other people make. As far as, far as my reaction to that is, I'm, I'm going to go with that notion that says to err is human, and we can ask the question when we do make mistakes, how might we learn from those mistakes? That I'm going to start that within myself. I'll extend it to others. Holding grudges allows you to feel powerful and self-righteous. Holding grudges drains me. I'm going to seek to accept other individuals as common sense will allow. You confer value onto others if they achieve or if they fit your mold appropriately. For me, human value and, and worth simply is. I know you don't understand that in the least. You're smug enough to presume that you know all that you need to know. I hope I never stop learning. I'm going to be a work in progress between now and the day that I die. Now, there are so many other comments like that that I could make but I'm hoping that you can gain a core understanding about what self-respect is and how central it is to claim, uh, claim it so that you can move on down the road towards your own personal healing. Uh, it's not, uh, uh, self-respect is not something that another person gives you. In other words, it's not externally based, but self-respect is something that you recognize. It's just simply in you. Do you see it? Self-respect begins with the realization that there's a universal moral code to be discovered, and you want to lean into uh, knowing and understanding what is right and good and decent. Self-respect and boundaries go hand in hand. And when you have self-respect plus boundaries, it means that you have defined who you want to be and you're going to lean into that as opposed to playing off of whatever dysfunction that narcissist throws in your direction. 
Self-respect requires discipline. And all those things that I just mentioned, you realize sometimes you have to train yourself to think differently than what that narcissist has wanted to put in your mind. Um, but it means that you're going to sidestep that narcissist, that, that narcissist exploitive tendencies. Sometimes you can doubt your own worthiness and you can doubt your own uh, respectability, especially when you make blunders or when poor decisions are brought to light. But let's remember, no one is so perfect that we can actually earn complete and total and perfect respect. Instead, what we're going to do, we're going to stand up to the critical messages that the narcissist and anyone else says that, that says, well, if you make mistakes, then you can't have my respect. And I'm going to uh, sidestep that. And I'm going to sidestep my own inner critic. And I'm going to remind myself, respect toward myself and toward others will be and will continue to be a bedrock has a, a part of the bedrock foundation for my emotional and relational stability. I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life in the pursuit of respect. I'd like to give it to you and I'm, I'm going to draw upon it from within myself. That's who I am. And I gladly differentiate myself from that disrespecting, unaware narcissist. Now, I hope this gives you some good food for thought. And I so I, I know so many of you have been exposed to people that have no regard for you. That's a commentary about who they are and not about who you are. And so I'm hoping that this is something that can prompt some good learning and, and self-reflection. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so and watch the videos on a cumulative basis. And I'm hoping it can give you strength from within. If you have a need for therapy, as you're trying to come to terms with what I'm talking about here, I would strongly encourage that. You know that I've been sponsored for years by the people at, the, at betterhelp.com. Uh, online therapy has become very popular since the pandemic. Below, there's a link to the uh, BetterHelp people. Uh, there's a whole team of licensed professional therapists. It's affordable, it's accessible, and I've had many uh, positive uh, uh, encounter, uh, testimonials that I could draw from, uh, please. If you have a need for uh, therapy, get the assistance that you need. Speaking of therapy, I have my therapeutic courses. And this is like signing up for an online class. It's very extensive. Each course has multiple videos, like 25 or more, plus written uh, documents and guided questions. Uh, we have Ready, Set, Connect about having healthy connections. We have This Is Me about establishing those boundaries that I mentioned. And uh, we also have Free to Be. Uh, that's a course about finding yourself despite the controllers in your life. In addition, I have my webinars, which is a bit of a different kind of formula, uh, format. And we have my podcast, our books, uh, articles, plenty of resources for you. Uh, Self-respect is so essential for you as you uh, find your healing. It's not something that the narcissist will participate in. I get that. Let's, let, let's just uh, take that as given. But then in the meantime, you still get to choose for yourself who you're going to be and what you'll emphasize. And I'm hoping that as you do learn to lean into your respect for who you are, your core dignity, it allows you to be a steady person and it's, it's something that will take you to a well-deserved place of peace.